Hello everyone and welcome to Instant Biology by Dr. Neela. The topic that we would be dealing today is Maxim Gilbert sequencing. This is the second lecture in the video series on sequencing. In the first lecture we have already talked about Sanger sequencing. That is one of the main uh, sequencing methods but now it has also been replaced by high, uh, high throughput sequencing or what do you call as this Illumina method or NGS that is next generation sequencing. We would talk about that in another lecture but this is the Maxim Gilbert sequencing. I have divided the whole lecture into a number of uh, parts as you can see on the board and we would be dealing with each part in detail. Okay, So let us start. What is the need of a particular sequencing method? We have already talked about this in the Sanger sequencing method that what is actually sequencing. So sequencing is a method in which we can come to know about the exact position of a particular nucleotide where A is present, where T is present, where G and where C is present in a particular uh, DNA fragment that or, or an RNA fragment that can be known with the help of sequencing. So why do we need to know this? We need to know this because once we get to know about the sequence of a particular, of, of a particular DNA fragment uh, then what do you what can you do is you can compare this sequence with the other sequences that are present in database and then you can come to know that where a particular mutation is seen and what kind of mutation can cause what kind of disease you can easily compare with the with your uh, sequence that you have in your hand and the sequence that is of a wild type so mutant can be compared to a wild type and you can or know that what is the cause of a particular disease or which mutation causes what disease. So this is basically why sequencing is generally used. Now this Maxim Gilbert sequencing is also called as chemical method of sequencing, chemical cleavage method of sequencing or chemical degradation method of sequencing. So these three names are just like synonyms of uh, Maxim Gilbert sequencing, chemical method, chemical cleavage method and chemical degradation method okay so it was discovered by Ellen Maxim and Walter Gilbert that on the name of the scientists only the name of the technique is there okay so what is the process of this particular uh, technique what do we do is this is the DNA strand that we are working upon 5 prime to 3 prime is the direction of this strand and 3 prime to 5 prime is the direction of this strand so this is just the normal stuff what do you do Next is you try and you cleave off this 5 prime phosphate end. You know that at 5 prime end phosphate is present. So in, in any sequencing method you have to locate your sequence first. For location purpose what do you do? You need to produce or you ne need to make a radioactive uh, you need to add a radioactive phosphate over here. So first of all you need to cleave off the original phosphate. A which enzyme is used for cleaving the phosphate? Alkaline phosphatase. So alkaline phosphatase would be used here and what would it do? It would cleave the 5 prime phosphate in both of these strands. So in, the, in this uh, over here you can see that here also 5 prime phosphate is lost and here also 5 prime phosphate is lost. So this was the, what do you say, this is the mechanism or this is the working of alkaline phosphate. Now in the next process you have to add a 5 prime phosphate which should be radio labeled. Now what should be uh, the, what should the enzyme be for addition of a, a phosphate that should be, that is radio labeled. It is polynucleotide kinase. So polynucleotide kinase would be used. What is the function of polynucleotide kinase? It would add 5 prime phosphate, 5 prime phosphate that is radio labeled. Why it should be radio labeled? It should be radio labeled because during sequencing you need to locate your fragment. When the 5 prime end is phosphorylated, you can or radio labeled. You what what would the result be? You can easily check that this sequence is starting from here, this sequence is starting from here. So enormous number of sequences you can locate that where are they starting from. 
okay so with this 5 prime phosphate would be added that would be radio labeled and then finally what you would what would you do you would denature the strands because the sequencing would work on one strand only right it would it, you need to denature the two strands that are present so for denaturation what would you use you would add the or you would uh, use the heat for that so i have written here denaturation so denaturation in for denaturation what what are you using is you are using heat okay so you are using heat and after denaturation what would happen both the strands would be separated now this is single stranded ss i have written so this is single stranded both of the strands have been separated now we have got our template that on which we have got the template on which we have to check or whose sequence we have to check we have got the template so after getting this what we have to do is we have to load it on a gel this is the gel and we have to load it we have loaded on we have loaded our uh, our DNA fragment we have loaded in this gel and we will allow it to run okay after running then what would we do is we will isolate suppose till here the DNA our DNA has run now what would we do we would cut this gel out cut this uh, uh, fragment out cut this band out to be true and then we would determine the sequence we would determine the we would cut this uh, band out and then we would elute this dna out sorry we would elute this the dna that is present over here we would elute it and we would divide the dna into four aliquots okay what would we name the aliquots g a plus g g plus t and c why are we naming uh, with such random names i will tell you about this but we will uh, keep the dna that is that we have obtained from here and put it into four tubes the tubes would be named as g a plus g g plus t and c okay and also we would place in it other uh, required uh, other required things like dna polymerase also we have to put in this and we have we also have to put the nucleotides or other uh, important materials that are needed for the replication or for the synthesis of dna are put into this as i have already explained in the uh, sanger sequencing method right so we would put our dna and other important things over here and then this would be allowed to incubate right now an important an important principle or how this sanger sequence or how this maxim gilbert sequencing works is here okay so we are using actually uh, dimethyl sulfate, formic acid, hydrazine and hydrazine plus NaCl. Now these chemicals are responsible for modifying a particular base. Okay. For example, dimethyl sulfate modifies guanine, formic acid modifies adenine plus guanine. This means that it can modify adenine also and it can modify guanine also. For hydrazine, it can modify guanine as well as thymine and for hydrazine plus NaCl it can modify cytosine so these are the chemicals and they can modify different bases that are that have been written over here so these uh, chemicals or these chemicals would be used in each tube for for instance in the G tube you have to use dimethyl sulfate and all the other things would be the same in second tube that is A plus G tube you have to add formic acid and all the other things would be same in the third tube you would be adding hydrazine uh, that is labeled as g plus t and in the finally in the final tube that is uh, c tube you would be adding hydrazine plus nacl i have already told you that these chemicals would modify a particular base okay so now what will happen after the reaction gets completed in these tubes after the reaction get com com uh, gets completed mean, we mean that after the strands have been synthesized with the help of DNA polymerase what would we do is we would take the uh, the components that are present in these tubes and we would run it on the gel okay but before that let me show you or let me tell you let me explain you that what happens in the particular uh, uh, particular tube 
Just before that, one thing more I would like to add is after the action of these chemicals, we also add piperidine. Now, piperidine is a chemical that would cut the modified base. These chemicals were used to modify the base and after the base has been modified, it is cut by the action of piperidine. On which position it cuts? It would, it would cut on the 5' prime end of the modified base. Let us check this out. For, in, for instance, we uh, take an example of DMS and piperidine. DMS is dimethyl sulfate. You can see that it modifies guanine. Okay. Suppose this is our fragment. This is the phosphate end. This, this uh, end has been radio labeled. That is why you are able to see this particular uh, uh, particular sequence. Okay. Suppose this is the phosphate terminal and this is your sequence. Sequence states that T A C G T T A G G A T. This is the sequence. Okay. As we have already discussed that dimethyl sulfate would uh, modify the guanine. So here guanine is present. You can see that here guanine is present. It would modify guanine and due to the action of piperidine, what will happen is at 5 prime end of this base, 5 prime, this is the 5 prime end and 5 prime end of guanine, what will happen it is it will result in a cut. From here, the sequence would be uh, 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 divided into two parts okay so this would be the first sequence that would that you will obtain just as p phosphate and tac just because after uh, this guanine has been modified and piperidine divides this or cuts this strand next here also guanine is present here also you can cut and this would be the sequence uh, that would be obtained by this i i just want to say that uh, by addition, this uh, dimethyl sulfate would randomly modify a particular guanine in this entire sequence. That is not known which particular guanine would it modify, but it would modify a particular guanine, a uh, random guanine. So when it modifies this, piperidine just cuts at 5 prime end of that particular sequence and you would obtain n number of sequences. Okay, just like this. Suppose this is the length of a sequence. This is first sequence. This is another uh, random sequence that you would get in this particular tube only. Suppose this here also guanine is present. This is the third sequence that would you would obtain after the guanine is modified, right? Let us take another example of formic acid and piperidine. What does formic acid, uh, formic acid and uh, does is formic acid modifies adenine and guanine. It can modify both. Okay, and after the action of piperidine, what will happen? The sequence would be cut down at the adenine also and at the guanine also. So what what can be uh, how can this be understand this with the help of an example? Suppose this is the uh, DNA segment that we are working upon. We uh, used formic acid. Then what will happen? It will just uh, modify this adenine. It will modify this adenine, and after the action of Piperidine, what will happen? You would get the, this would be the first sequence. Next, what will happen? It also modifies guanine. So this would guanine would be modified. You would get TAC. Okay. Suppose and so on. This, these uh, random sequences would be obtained after you use formic acid and piperidine. And similarly, after adding hydrazine and hydrazine plus NaCl, you would get different different fragments. Right. So this would be the action of these chemicals. Now, once you are done with all this process, you what do you do is you utilize the, uh, the components that are present in these tubes and run a particular gel. What would, what would be the gel? This would be an agarose gel. Now, what would you do? You would just from the lower end of the gel, you would start analyzing or you would start observing the bands that are present. Okay. Now, let us see what bands are present and how can you read a particular uh, gel okay let us see that okay so first uh, this is the 5 prime end as i have already explained this uh, to you in the previous that is sanger sequencing method this would be the 5 prime end this would be the 3 prime end so let us start starting from 5 prime end what is the first sequence what is the first band that we come across is guanine okay then what do we come across is A plus G. Okay, we come across A plus G. But you can see that 
a, a here a plus g is uh, uh, here a plus g is present but you cannot see any g over here once if you compare these two chemicals formic acid can modify adenine as well as guanine and dimethyl sulfate can modify guanine only so if does if this band would correspond to a guanine then here also a band would have been present but since it is not present then we can see we can say that this particular band corresponds to adenine right i guess you would have understood this similarly when you come across this third band it is uh, showing c plus t right it is showing c plus t but can you see a base corresponding can you see a band uh, corresponding to c over here no you cannot see it so we can conclude that this particular uh, band is corresponding to thymine right now the other the next one is again adenine plus guanine but can you see a guanine over here no you cannot see again adenine would be present over here now after this we can again see air c so we can again see c over here so this is c now coming to the next one this is again adenine plus guanine can you see a base corresponding to uh, adenine, uh, guanine over here no you cannot so you just can see the adenine you can just write over here adenine now sim, uh, just after that guanine just after that again adenine plus guanine can you see a guanine over here no so adenine and finally cytosine plus thymine you can see but you cannot see cytosine over here so it would be thymine this ends this sequence ends so we can just write three prime over here so this is the complete sequence of the synthesized strand this strand has been synthesized in our tubes right we if we want to know the sequence of the strands that were that our template strand if we want to know the sequence of, of our template strand what will we do we will construct a complementary sequence to this what would be the complementary sequence you would just write three prime over here and then write the corresponding or complementary bases to these segments what would be the first one guanine is uh, complementary to cytosine adenine is to thymine thymine to adenine adenine to thymine cytosine to guanine adenine to thymine guanine to cytosine adenine to thymine thymine to cytosine sorry thymine to adenine so, and this end would be phi prime end right okay so this is the complete sequence that we were talking about this is the sequence that we were looking forward to that we wanted that we wanted to know about that was our template strand so this is the method which is known as maxim gilbert method this is why it is called less chemical method because we are using different chemicals over here with which we are able to analyze our sequence i guess this lecture would have been useful to you and you would have been able to learn about this maxim gilbert sequencing method if you have any problems related to this video you can comment on the comment section and i would love to answer your queries please like uh, my video please subscribe to my channel and uh, look forward to other set of videos thank you so much have a great day